do hope Kamalana isn't crying anymore. Yeah. Shush. How long is it going to be before you send in another exorcist to replace Lady Teresa? With these demons clamoring at our gates, none of us feel safe anymore. You have our deepest sympathies, but we were sent here on a different mission. That's what the last exorcist who came here said before leaving for the north. What could be up there that's worth all that attention? Surely we're not all being punished by the Abbey for what happened with Medissa, are we? That is not the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business to attend to. So the exorcists are just passing through town and heading straight north. Odd. Ever since the Calamity showed up, everything's just gone to pot, I say. Calamity? What do you mean? I mean the demon who barged in and made a mess of our fair city. She's a nasty creature of pure evil, with an arm that eats anything that gets in her way. Haven't you heard of her? The Calamity's been rampaging across the whole kingdom, not just here. Scant few have seen her and survived. Huh. You don't say. After the Calamity raised our ships and our port, the shipping guild fell apart, and our trade routes got poached by other ports. It's bad. The town relies on trade to make ends meet. People are abandoning the city, and our streets are no longer safe. Not to mention the demon blight spreading again. Just the other day, a little kid turned into a demon. Just like that. What a world. What a world. What have the exorcists been doing during all of this? Well, Lady Teresa was in charge of this region but she came up short against the Calamity and got a fat demotion for her troubles. Several new exorcists have been reassigned here, but once they arrive, they all traipse right off to the ruins up north. This has to be Medissa's fault. If she hadn't gone and done something so stupid... Medissa... That's enough. This isn't something for outsiders to know. You're right. Sorry. <sighs> I'm really worried about what's going to come of this town. Sounds like Helifis isn't what it used to be these days. We need to ask around and find out more about what's going on here. Agreed. Especially regarding the Abbey and those ruins. I'm also curious about this Medissa woman. The ruins part makes sense, since the Earth Pulse Point might be there. But why do you care who Medissa is? Just a hunch. Something tells me she's worth looking into. You're not gonna look into this Calamity chick? She sounds like a real terror. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I already know plenty about what makes her tick. Are you alright, Madame Eleanor? Don't let those people get you down. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but could you not do that thing where you blow air on me to dry my tears? Alright, I'll just pat your head then. That won't be necessary either. But really... Things are in a terrible state. The town burned, the guild ruined, the abbey all but gone. It won't be a functioning port for some time. You can't fault them for being upset. They had it real good here until we came along. Those Helevisians were like spoiled children. How so? Helevis was once a tiny fishing village. The bountiful northern seas provided plenty enough fish to sustain their trade. But Flamestone gave them an easy way to get rich. And once they got a taste, they abandoned their old craft. And now they're paying the price. But I've heard that the cooling temperature has covered half the Northern Sea in ice drift, making fishing much more difficult. Uh, but the drifting ice carries tiny organisms, enriching the waters where it melts. The fish should be more plentiful than ever. I suppose you may have a point. We're ones to talk after what we did, but taking the easy path, then complaining as soon as it gets hard, that seems... Spoiled, yes. You said it, Luffy said. I think my appetite's getting a little overindulgent, too. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Just means you're healthy. Giant squid come to these waters in this season. Should I ask Benwick to fish some up? Yeah, and some normal octopuses, too. <laughs> 
This calamity is... us, isn't it? Well, we've been waging war with the Abbey everywhere we go, and now we're about to take it to a new level. If we pull the next Therian off of the Earth Pulse point, it'll likely be Kamoana's village all over again. The same devastation? Ooh! I wonder if there's something worse than calamity that they can call us! This is no laughing matter. People turn into demons in part due to their own malevolence. It's not like they're entirely innocent. But if there's someone out there who's being forced to act as Inominat's mouth, like Kamoana was, isn't saving them the right thing to do? I cannot argue with that, but... You don't have to worry. I'm the one who will devour the barrier. And I'm the one who will do what needs to be done. The demon attacks have ground trade to a halt. But people are slowly starting to fish again. Are you a fisherman too? Aye. This town got swept up in the recent trade boom. But back when I was a young lad, this was a fishing port through and through. Ever since the shipping guild took over the docks, all of us fishermen got muscled out. Making this a commercial port has helped the town grow. But a lot of people weren't so happy with the guild. It's too bad everyone couldn't just work together. Once money gets involved, people change. That's true no matter what age you live in. The people know it's the ones making the money who lead the charge. But we follow anyway. It's human nature. I hope everyone changes their minds once we start rebuilding. But who knows what will happen. Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sorry, I'm busy. Try someone else. <sighs> Excuse me. My name is Eleanor, and I'm an exorcist on patrol with the Abbey. I was wondering if I could solicit your honest opinion about how this town is being run. Oh, I didn't realize there was an exorcist with you. Yes, please tell the Abbey we want Lady Teresa back. Her governance was strict, it's true, but at least we could live in safety. Now, all the exorcists run off to the Faldi's ruins and leave us here in the lurch. They value some dusty, faraway ruins over the lives of the good, hardworking citizens here. It's just wrong. We've always been cooperative with the Abbey's demands. And now this is what we get in return. I... I see. The Abbey appreciates your, uh, candor. I'll pass your comments on to my superiors. First it was the sailors, and then even a small girl caught the demon blight. I was sure it was going to start spreading through this town as well, but then after that incident it just went poof and disappeared. I guess I was expecting a little more after hearing how contagious it was. I wonder what really causes it. Who knows? I heard of this one village in East Gand where everyone caught it at once. It wiped out the entire town. <laughs> I hope the Abbey develops a cure quickly. I can't wait for the day where we can live without fear. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah, she used to live just down the road from me. Medisha raised her daughter Diana all on her own. And then they up and murdered the girl. Murdered? By whom? The exorcists. Once Diana caught the demon blight, the damned Abbey exterminated her like a rat. How cruel. 
I felt just terrible. But I suppose there wasn't much else to be done with her. But Medissa, she hated the Abbey for what they'd done. So she barricaded herself inside the sanctuary. She just kept on screaming, all like, demons have feelings too. What happened after that? I wouldn't have been surprised to see her executed. But luckily, she was spared that much. An exorcist stopped the guard who was about to cut her down, said, Don't kill her. She's receptive. Receptive, huh? I think that's their way of referring to her deep faith. Before all this, she was a real devout lady. That was certainly kind of them. Medissa really cherished her daughter. Can't much blame her for blowing up like that. But the Abbey, they don't care so much about feelings. Reason is all that matters to them. They don't take kindly to people disrupting their order. <sighs> If you go north from Helibes, you'll come upon the Faldi's Ruins, which are Abbey property. Mainly, it's used as a checkpoint for hauling ore that's extracted out of Mount Killeraus. But between you and me, I hear the Abbey also uses it as a prison camp. A prison camp? Are they capturing demons? Heavens no! The demons they kill on sight! No, these prisoners are human criminals. Not long ago, this woman killed someone and locked herself up in the sanctuary. I hear she got hauled off to the camp. Why do you think the Abbey would use the ruins for a prison camp? Who knows? Maybe they need a place to deal out their harshest punishments. The Abbey's not known to be forgiving, after all. <laughs> uh, but these are just nasty rumors I heard. Of course, I don't believe a word of it. I can't believe the demon blight has spread into the city now. Scary times. Well, the one who caught it was a little girl, so they were able to deal with her before anything bad happened. But the problem was that the demon girl's mother tried to hide her. That's only human nature. These are dangerous times. We dare not let our emotions control us. One person's selfishness could endanger the entire community. Oh, uh, right. Thankfully, an upstanding citizen noticed something suspicious and reported the child to the Abbey. But the mother went mad and killed him in retribution. And what makes it all the more lurid is, I heard the man she killed was a fellow she was actually thinking about marrying. The daughter had been dead set against her mother remarrying. You can taste the irony. That's... that's horrible. Eh, she had it coming. If there's anything worse than demons, it's people who can't control themselves. So, Diana was a girl turned demon who was killed by an exorcist. And her mother Medissa hated the Abbey for it. And the Abbey is using the Faldi's ruins up north as a prison camp. It's a lot like what happened to Kamawana, isn't it? It's natural for a mother to love her own child. To make that a crime. What I'm curious about is the use of the word receptive to describe Medissa. So long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn. If our interpretation of that ancient book is right, it likely means she's receptive to Inominat's power. Meaning they brought Medissa to those ruins where there's an Earth Pulse point, and then they made her into a Therian. That would certainly put all the pieces together, yep. Plus, if this Therian the Abbey created already hates them, that's all the better for us. Yeah, I imagine she'd be willing to work with us. Although, it sounds almost too easy. Did I jinx it? I just jinxed it, didn't I? Probably, but we won't find out until we try. True. Let's head for the ruins. And don't worry, you totally jinxed it. Now we have demons rampaging through our towns. Northgans really had a string of bad luck. The weather's gotten even colder. Mercio's port is blocked by an ice drift. And hardly anyone sails the North Seas anymore. But relief supplies have made it up here, right? It may fill our bellies, but not our hearts. Huh? If the Abbey truly wants to save this town, there's something we need more than food or gold. Lady Teresa! 
If only I could be pierced once more by those fierce ice-cold eyes. Oh, punish me, Teresa, my love! Wow. Can we make it so that he doesn't get any more supplies? Uh, Lady Teresa, my life is for you. Wow. Hi! I was wondering if you'd let us put on a little comedy show. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Just try and keep it low-key. I don't want to attract the Abbey's attention. Ha! <laughs> That's a tall order. Wherever we go, the boy and I have him rolling in the aisles. The boy? Wait, you mean me? I sure do. I'll play the straight man, you play the funny one. Don't sweat it. Even if you mess up, you'll be adorable. The audience will just lap it up. Did you memorize the script I wrote you? Yeah, I think so. Great, I knew you could do it. But if you merely follow the script and adhere to its every word, you won't be very funny. You need to ad-lib in your own style. For you, that's buttering up the audience and winning them over. Ad-lib? I'm not sure I can do that. I have faith in you, kiddo. You're gonna discover a part of you that you never knew existed. Just focus on finding ways to charm our audience. Okay, I'll see what I can do. All right, then let's get this show rolling. Hi there, we're a boy and his witch, your partners in comedy today. Magic Azam! We're still new to the comedy business, but we'll do our best to give you a memorable show. I'm Fee, the cute one, and this blustering witch is... Muggy Lou! Wait, who are you calling blustering? <laughs> Meow! S sorry I just suddenly felt like doing an imitation. An imitation? Like, of a cat? Not just any cat, a nearby cat. Meow! You're losing them. Time to go on our charm offensive. Roll with it, kiddo. Every slip up is just a new opportunity in disguise. Ah, uh, see? It's supposed to be a pun on how cats sound and how near is pronounced. I didn't actually hear a nearby cat meow like that or anything. He's explaining the joke? Are you going crazy, Luffy Set? What good does explaining a bad joke do? But you told me to ad-lib to try and win our audience over, didn't you? I figured maybe if I explained it to them, they'd get the joke and find it funny. Just stop. Even if they get the joke that way, it's just going to be sad. I don't mind that. I'm not afraid of messing things up. I just want to make sure our audience feels valued. No, no, you have the right idea, but... I guess I should mention, Moggy Lou's the one who came up with the script. She just made me come and act it out. <laughs> I don't care if it made the audience happy, you just sold me out! I can't work with you like this, no way! <laughs> We got a lot of ad-libbing into our routine today. How was the show? <sighs> I'll just say one thing. You need a better writer. It wasn't me. It's a book titled Words and Deeds of the Hero King. The king declared... My people, you must always live with great vigor and hold hope for the world and for our future. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it. Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. My people, you must live without hesitation. Hold hope in your hearts. Hold hope for tomorrow. Transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. Lord Artorius, I have successfully translated all of the documents left by your predecessor. However, I have concluded that, for the time being, it is impossible to form pacts with all four Empyreans. As I feared, not even my predecessor could achieve more than two. I suppose using the fifth Empyrean is my only option. Is that even acceptable? Doing so would require... I will do whatever needs to be done. I betrayed my teacher. I betrayed the mission he gave his life for, that he entrusted in my hands. 
For a time, I thought I could bear the weight of my sins and go on living with Selica by my side. But now, she's gone. Yes. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it? Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. I must bring about the ideal world. I couldn't protect the people I loved. But this, at least, I will accomplish. Arthur? Huh? What is it, Velvet? Were you just talking to someone? No. I was just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. I, uh, finished making dinner. Tonight is prickle boar stew. Plenty of meat, but not too heavy. <laughs> Sounds great. Let's hurry on back home, then. I don't know exactly what all that means, but it kind of sounds nice. I suppose. Actually, it doesn't make much sense to me either. It's too dense for me. <laughs> <laughs>